let's make a cup of tea first. I'm gonna use my pretty mug. Okay, while the water's boiling, we're going to work beauty. And it's not just about how we look, it's also about music and nature and kindness, you name it. Even the crows agree. But sometimes we get caught up trying to look perfect, right? Like, you know, when I put on my makeup or when you put on your makeup and dye your hair or even consider surgery to change how you look. But guess what? Real beauty is about being ourselves, flaws and all. So I recently had a conversation with my friend from Elgin, Illinois. And it was primarily, we were talking about the nature of beauty and its implications. Now you see, not every day do I do my hair and makeup. In fact, this might be one of the very few times you will witness me done up. <laughs> Personally, I've never been one to for regular hair maintenance, hence this is a real spectacle. And it's only just tied up. A while ago, I tried henna treatments in my hair for, and as an experience, as intriguing as applying what looks like and smells like cow's dung on one's hair, it's, it, it smell lingered for days and I can't, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. I want to touch on cosmetic surgeries, like those designed to remove under eye bags. And it got me thinking, when did we become so comfortable about altering our natural faces in the pursuit of what is perceived perfection. And I confess, I've had Botox in the past twice and I've had fillers. That was it in the past. I'm talking about 10 years ago. So did that give me the results that I wanted? Not quite. And honestly, I don't plan on spending my hard earned money every few months for touch ups. I, I think that's madness. That's me. That's just my opinion. And that was a time, and the reason why I did that was because my dermatologist informed me that a couple of things. One was my nose was crooked. I had crow's feet and wrinkles. I had discolored skin. And you know, I had to fix these because he's a dermatologist and it's his business to make sure that you keep going back to get things done. Because this is what he said comes to a woman my age. Now granted, I was 40 years old. I wasn't even 52 like I am today. But I took his advice on board back in my 40s because I was like, well, you know, he's a professional. He knows what he's talking about. But I was not aware of my crooked nose. Now, for those who don't know me very well, I was hit by a car when I was a toddler. And I had this crooked nose as a result of that ever since. I mean, I was lucky to get out of it alive. I was literally two years old at the time. But this is what happened when this is what happens when you get flung in the air and your face hits a curb. So the question begs is, Whose ideal of beauty standards are we living by? Are we living by the celebrities who have time and the money and the means to do this on a continuous basis? Or are we following our own inner guidance, like our uniqueness? So needless to say, the dermatologist convinced me to go and get my nose done. So I booked and I paid in full for my operation. And a week prior, I started getting anxious and scared and fearful and two days before my surgery I was literally having a full-blown anxiety attack when I was having that anxiety attack it wasn't because I was going under the under the knife it was mainly because I kept thinking to myself why am I doing this surgery am I doing it because I'm appeasing this dermatologist who's telling me that I'm imperfect did I really take what he said on board to be gospel truth. I'm not doing it because I need to fix a problem like I can't breathe at night. So you see, oh, that's hot. Hang on a minute. Mm. Oh, I love tea. So you, the, so you see, the truth is we're all born perfect we're all born beautiful and unique and you know expressing that beauty is different for each and every one of us sure if you have a disfigurement or something that you are uncomfortable with and changing it makes you happy then by all means do it i'm not saying no not to but don't get conned into procedures just because everyone else is doing them and it's the new thing now Yes, my face is saggy, but that's my genetic heritage. Should I spend my life 
trying to defy gravity? Probably not. But honestly, I'd rather not spend my time sitting in a doctor's office. I don't know about you. But remember, you are beautiful because you are unique. There's only one of you. There's never been anyone quite like you before. And there will never be anyone like you ever again. So why do you aspire to look like everyone else? You see, true beauty lies in your confidence and self-love. You see, I adore my grey hair. If anyone has an issue with that, it's their problem. It's not mine. The same goes for the bags under my eyes, the saggy cheeks, my crooked nose. Now, my weird eyes. I have one eye bigger than the other. Now, if you can't appreciate my natural beauty, that's your problem. Do I wish for a fresher face? Yeah, we all do. But I won't go under the scalpel for it. There was a period in my life where for about probably about a year, I actually bought um, a lot of like facial rejuvenation tools like the red light therapy these are frequency tools the ones with the glass and the and the and the light coming out the the, the frequency tools new face i bought two of them they both broke down on me and at 700 us dollars a pop i was not buying any more um, and then i found the gua sha tools although i'm gonna say to you it works when you do things on repetition same when i was talking in my previous videos if you want inner change to work and it's an inside job you've got to work on it consistently and persistently all the time it's repetition 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 by now you know <laughs> i always say i sound like a broken record okay so i am the woman with as the broken record i'm always going to be reminding you about repetition because everything does work if you do it repetitively so it did work. My skin looked better. I looked fresher, you know, doing LED therapy every single, you know, three, four times a week. You know, getting those frequency things on your face was like rejuvenating my skin. I looked fantastic. And you've got to remember, I haven't been to the dermatologist in 10 years. So everything worked. And I'm telling you now, I'm going back into doing my gua sha because I noticed a difference. And guess what? I don't have to buy expensive tools. I don't have to buy expensive equipment. I don't have to go under the knife. I don't have to get injectors and fillers and stuff. Do you believe that by massaging your face, using gua sha and massaging your actual scalp helps so much more than all of these procedures that all these doctors and dermatologists and facial specialists recommend? Yes, that's true. Let's have a little bit more coffee. However, just to clarify, I don't judge those who choose those surgeries and injections and fillers or any other cosmetic procedures. If it makes you feel good about yourself, then I encourage it. But remember, it should be your decision alone, not an outcome of societal pressure and external opinions. I've been called I have resting bitch face on many occasions. I actually don't care because think about it. Our imperfections tell stories. You see those gray, those, you see those wrinkles and my gray hairs? They're reminders of my journey through life. So why do I try to cover them up as if they're, like they're faulty? Because we're all different and that's what makes us beautiful. Can you imagine if there was a whole planet cookie cut of two people? How fucking boring would that be? If the whole planet was literally a cookie cutter of some celebrity. That would be the most fucking boring place to live on. Yeah, I said it. You see, I know society does put a lot of pressure on us to look a certain way. Same with this YouTube channel, you know? I have seen some comments of people and they are truly crazy. But you see me, my hair's done up. I don't look like a lion's mane and I've got makeup on. But you know, after all these external pressures, you don't have to buy into it. I don't. I'm only doing this because out of respect for you guys, okay? So that doesn't mean saying no to unrealistic standards because I love who I am. Now, during the lockdown period, I came into my own at that time because at that time, there was no need for me to do my hair. There was no need for me to shave my legs. Yeah, my husband has other opinions on that. There was no need for me to put makeup. There was no critics looking at me saying, oh, look at her. She looks unattractive and, you know, unpolished. I didn't care. Now, it was during this time, it was during that time that I took it upon myself to start working on my inner self. I started working on, on reading more, on doing my online courses that I'd paid for, I never got a chance to complete. And it was during that time 
that I stopped wearing makeup and I didn't care. You see, there's going to be haters out there who say, you know, you look horrible without makeup. But you know what? It takes me a lot of effort to do these videos looking the way I do. Because firstly, I have no idea how to apply makeup. I have watched so many makeup tutorials on YouTube and every time I watch them, I end up spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on makeup that is useless to me because I can't apply it the way these women do on YouTube. And then I end up looking like a circus clown. So imagine after all these years, since I can remember, you know, you got to remember one thing. All my life I've always worn makeup. I never left the house without makeup. I never left the house without wearing my watch or my jewelry. And you know what? I now leave the house barefaced without a watch. It's time to make a choice for yourself. What is it that you want? I don't need to impress anyone but myself. You don't have to let yourself go. You just have to be true to yourself and to step out into the world with the face that you were born with and not be ashamed, you know? I want you to challenge conventional beauty standards because this is the most liberating, liberating time in history where we don't have to, we don't have to care what we look like. If our skin is blotchy from hormones and we've got wrinkles and yes, I'm going to have some haters and then I'm going to get all the scorn and people going, lifting their eyebrows at me in surprise. But you know what? When I looked into this camera, this is not my everyday look. If you saw me in my everyday look, you wouldn't even follow me. Because I'm thinking this and saying to you, I'm going to have my tea. In all seriousness, who's going to watch a woman in her 50s with no makeup, hair that looks like a lion's mane, wearing her thongs, or here in Australia we call them thongs, everywhere else you call them flip-flops. I wear my shorts, my singlet or t-shirt, no makeup on. Yes, you probably agree. You wouldn't be watching someone's channel if they look like that. So there it is, the expectation. And I guess there's always an expectation to look your best when you're presenting yourself in front of a camera. You have to speak nicer, a lot more clearer. You And you know what? People say, be yourself. But I'm going to tell you something, because especially trying to be a YouTuber, right? You do get criticism. You get criticism on what you look like. You get criticism that there's lipstick on your teeth. You get criticism you got like a snot in your nose, which is half the time that's me all the time. If you look at my videos, I've always got something in my nose. I've always got lipstick on my teeth. My hair's always got flyaways. You know, my hair's not the best. I think you're just looking here. You're not looking behind me, right? I'm getting a hot flush. Hang on a minute. I've got to take my tablets. So even being on YouTube, right? I have to give my, I have to give the world the most polished version of myself. I'm always going to buck the system. Every now and then, you may see me fresh faced. But what you will not see me is ever go under the scalpel in the pursuit of beauty because that's someone else's standards, it's not mine. I will not get fillers anymore because a dermatologist suggested me to. Or if someone says to get my nose done because I've been made aware of it, it's imperfection and I can see these imperfections. But you see, I don't want to look like anyone else. I want to look like me. There's only one of me and I'm unique. Just as you are unique. I like myself and I am quite happy with who I am. So why would I aspire to look like someone else? You see, true beauty lies in your confidence and self-love. It's about accepting yourself and embracing who you are. So let's ditch the makeup from time to time and show the world our true selves. Let's celebrate our uniqueness and let our confidence shine through. Let's boldly challenge conventional beauty standards and release ourselves from societal expectations and choose to express our own unique beauty because real beauty comes from within and it's about time that we embrace it. So if you liked me being raw, <laughs> completely unfiltered, barefaced, and taking it all off, 
in the name of liberating yourself from putting on this wall paint, ladies, I highly suggest that you do this. It is so nice to actually breathe. I don't know if I've got anything on my nose. Probably do. So, if you like me being raw, unfiltered, and barefaced, please like, subscribe, and hit the notifications button. I shall see you in my next video. Have a fabulous day. And remember, you are so worthy. You are so loved. And you are so much more than just enough. I love you.